Gigabyte has two 800 series AM5 boards. The X870i is white and this one, the B850i is black. Uh, apart from that, they share many features, uh, but we'll see which one makes more sense today. Welcome to Machines More. So I did review the X870i previously, the, the Aorus Pro, and it was a good board. It's got a few quirks, but nonetheless, a decent choice. The Aorus Pro B850i is another option from Gigabyte. That B850 chipset sits beneath the X870. One key difference is that the Gen 5 expansion slot is optional under B850, but Gigabyte has implemented that here. Uh, so the main difference between this one and that Aorus Pro X870i is that the X870i has a USB 4 port. So I'll go through the features and overview, I'll take a look at performance and I'll share some thoughts for your purchasing decision. And before we uh, begin, big thanks to Gigabyte for sending by this board for review. I'm not paid by them for the review and as with all content on the channel, you can expect fair and objective feedback that is based on my independent testing. And if you enjoy content like this, please consider subscribing. It really helps the channel. Big thanks. Overview of the board, the BA50i Aorus Pro is a mini ITX motherboard for AMD's AM5 socket. And that means this supports Ryzen 7000 and 9000 CPUs, as well as 8000 APUs. Although the PCIe functionality is gonna be pared down if you go that route. As mentioned, you do get a Gen 5 expansion slot. It does have a protective plate around it, and there is a release button on the bottom right to release your graphics card when the time comes. And because of this mechanism, you'll notice that the bottom right corner screw hole has a longer uh, screw that's required. And they do include that uh, for M3 and 632 standoffs, but just make sure you don't lose it. The top M.2 is Gen 5 compatible, and it has a toolless latch. On this block here is a small board cooling fan, just like on the X870i, which I'll spend some time on when I discuss quirks of the board. Um, the front audio header, it is over here in this uh, corner over here, and this is flush with the, almost flush with the surface. So it's gonna be rather prominent when you have this plugged in, it's gonna run across the face of the board. It could be noticeable. It might be a little bit more difficult to conceal in, in a lot of builds. Two dims up to 8,400 MT per second with an OC, that's theoretical. Most of you will not be able to run that fast with Ryzen CPUs. For most users, the 6,000 mega transfer per second is a sweet spot. 24 pin ATX power connectors at the top right. You've got a 3.2 uh, by one header under it. Two SATA data ports. Front uh, panel uh, header is right over here. Then the 3.2 by two USB-C header. So all internal USB runs off of the chipset lanes. Top left here, EPS connector. Next to that, you'll find your CPU fan header. This is the uh, only four regular four pin fan header that's designated for CPU cooler fans. The top edge here, you got a four pin RGB and two three pin RGB, this ARGB, and you have two fan headers. This will require a dongle cable that uh, converts to a four pin. The back of the board, no back shields. Uh, there is a gen four uh, M.2 slot. So in this spot, things can get a little toasty. So I would recommend mounting a thin heat sink for your drive because either it's your you know side panel on the back or it's gonna be like a sandwich divider for an ITX build. Stock rear IO, it's almost a carbon copy of the X870i Aorus. At uh, first glance, it looks a little sparse, right? You've got one HDMI port for your iGPU. You've got two USB 2.0A ports. Uh, this one over here on the right is what you will use if you're updating your BIOS with QFlash, and that's a button for that right here. Two 3.2 Gen 1 A ports. These all run off the chipset. And then there is the 3.2 by 2 10 GC port. So the big advantage that the X870i Aorus adds is that it has another type C port, which is USB 4 just under it. So otherwise these two boards do look pretty similar at the back, but a USB 4 port can be a big deal. So just like the X870i though, the C port has this rectangular cutout, which eh, it's a little wonky. Um, <laughs> To round out the USB, you have two 3.2 Gen 2 A ports at the bottom. These and the C port all run off of the CPU lanes. For the networking, you have 2.5 GE right here and uh, Wi-Fi 7. 
the antenna uses Gigabyte's easy plug. It's a quick attach, quick release, but it also means conventional antennae or accessories won't work here. Audio is kind of limited. Uh, it's just a line out and mics. It's kind of sparse. Uh, the audio codec that they use is the Realtek ALC 4080. So compared to MSI's B850i, which I reviewed recently, this actually has more A ports, it has six in total. Um, in terms of the raw port count, of course, right? Because two of these are 2.0, the MSI has three 3.2 by two A ports versus the two here, and plus MSI's C port is a 20G versus the 10G here. So if you're looking for speed, I think the MSI will make you a little bit more happy. However, if you are like most users, you're gonna have to use two of these ports for a keyboard and a mouse anyway, right? So with your Aorus here, you just use your 2.0 ports for that and you're, you'll still have two 3.2 by one and two 3.2 by two A ports left. Whereas with the MSI, you'll be left with three 3.2 by two ports at best. The MSI does also have 5GE, it has Toslink, it has a clear CMOS button, which the ORS lacks. Uh, to clear the CMOS, you're going to have to access the header at the bottom right. But in whole, IO-wise, it's not terrible, but it's not great. Uh, will it be enough for most gaming builds? Yeah, I think so. Um, for more workstation purposes, I think you'll typically want more high-speed ports, though. Power delivery here for the V-Cores, courtesy of 8 80-amp stages. For reference, the MSI B850i has 8 90-amp stages, and the X870i Aorus has 810-amp stages. So while this is sufficient, this is going to be on the weaker end uh, spec-wise compared to other boards. Quirks are things that you should be aware of. So first off, if you do get this board, do not be surprised when you fire it up and it sounds like this. That's not your cooler fans, that's the mini board cooling fan, and out of the box, it is tuned pretty aggressively. That's index, two chipset temps, which is fine. Uh, more than likely, though, your chipset temps are going to be hovering around, say, that 40, high 40s, and low 50s. In that scenario, it's already running at 12,500 RPM, maybe 13,000 RPM. So you're going to hear that, you're going to notice it right away. And I would personally just dial those down to 20 or 30% right away. I tested the chipset temps between low, medium, high, and with the small difference here, there really isn't a huge justification to have this fan running that fast. This is like not a problem at all for the chipset temps. The VRM most temps are getting warm. These are not dangerous yet, but that fan, you know, you can see it's not really doing much for them anyway. So having good airflow at the board from a case fan, it's going to help a lot more than running this guy at a, a sound level that will really bother some people or a lot of people. Another quirk to be aware of is the fan connectors that are going to need the dongles for. So that's these two over here. Having the adapter cables is not the end of the world but you do need to keep track of them. So case in point, I was building up the X870i Aorus here today, which also uses uh, these little guys here. And I couldn't find the adapter cable and I had to look for it uh, for, you know, a while. <laughs> and it ended up being in this box that I keep cables and odds and ends in. And it was tucked away in that little corner. So because it's kind of, you know, thin, so I didn't see it. Uh, so if you don't need this right away you might need it one day so do keep it in the box or make sure you know where you store so you don't waste time looking for it uh, last thing is not so much of a quirk of the board but a little bit of a psa as well so uh there's a rev 1.0 and a rev 1.1 so if you do go and update your bios you need to take note of which boards you have they're actually not the same i have the 1.1 and i went to download the latest bios and even if you are aware that you need to pick one or the other the site is not crystal clear which one because it says 1.1 and 1.0 at the top, right? So I ended up grabbing the wrong one and I spent some time trying to update it to, to no avail. So do make sure you click through their product page. Rev1 uses the you know F1, F2 sequence. Rev1.0 uses FA1, FA2, or so on and so forth. And you will want to update the BIOS, especially for dual CCD Ryzen since Ajisa 1.2.0.3a has the patch that will fix core parking. Anyhow, to test this, I ran with the 9900X, and as mentioned, I did get to the latest BIOS for CPU intensive, heavy, all core blender render, uh, CCD1 and CCD2 clocks are a little bit uh, better than the MSI, but slower than the ASUS. Uh, if we zoom out to X870 boards as well, in general, those will get you flat, faster clocks here.
Single core clocks are fairly comparable here. Nothing really uh, too concerning. Game clock. So this is the average clock on the CCD that gaming is delegated to. So here it does appear to lag a little bit. It's not going to be an overwhelming impact on performance. It would have to be in CPU sensitive titles like this one. And here perhaps a 0.5 to 1% difference depending on our GPU um, at most between the Gigabyte and the fastest ASUS boards. It's not critical, but still something to note though. So I've covered the features and I've compared to boards like the MSI BA50i and the Aorus X870i and it's decision time, right? So right now this board comes in at 260 US, which frankly puts it in a pretty tough spot. The MSI BA50i is going right now, still going for 250 US and the Aorus X870i actually come down to 285. The MSI is a little bit cheaper and if you can make the port count work, I would absolutely choose that board. It's got better networking spec and better audio features as well. However, I feel like the biggest impediment to this board's marketability now isn't that MSI board, but rather Gigabyte's own X870i. Because if you're in this price bracket for a board, you know, $20, $30 one way or another, it's not going to be hugely significant. But think about it this way, for $25 more, if you go for the X870i, you're getting a higher end chipset plus a significantly stronger power delivery setup, which gives you more flexibility. And as a consequence of that better chips that you get an extra type C port on the back and the USB four port. So while many elements and quirks of these two ORS boards are shared, you are actually getting quite a bit for $25. And at current pricing, I would steer towards that one. And uh, while the BA50i ORS Pro is a fairly decent board, and it comes in black, which you know may be more ideal for a lot of your builds. Uh, for, for me, this board would have to come down a little bit more in price before I'd enthusiastically say, you know, go and you absolutely have to get this one because for sure it would at least have to be less than the MSI in my opinion. So if you do get this board, it would make the most sense in a gaming build. So there, my go-to CPUs currently are the 9800X 3D or the 9700X. You can also consider 9600X if you're on a budget uh, for a dual CCD Ryzen, while you certainly could do those. It's just that you also wanna have some sort of workstation purpose in mind to justify those. And this board's more limited IO just you know, it's not as ideal a fit for it. So I think this one, you know, you want to stick to 9700X or 9800X 3D. So there you have it. If you enjoyed it, please give a like, make sure you're subscribed. Uh, links for the board and the build are down below. And a big thanks for watching today.